For 25 years, Meredith Brooks, Grammy-nominated number one top 40 song, Bitch, from her multi-platinum album, Blurring the Edges, has served as an empowering anthem for women around the world. A top 40 global hit in over 20 countries, artists from Britney Spears to Sonic Youth have paid tribute to Bitch and Meredith as an influential trailblazer. Realigning semantics, she reclaimed the once derogatory term, pushing back against the stereotype of what a female rock and roll artist should be. That same year, Brooks played an integral part in another first, a movement looking to place women at the center of the music industry as a featured artist in the all-women music festival Lilith Fair, while also going on tour with rock legends The Rolling Stones and Melissa Etheridge. Recognized for her guitar playing prowess, Brooks was only the third woman to grace the cover of Guitar Player magazine with her blonde relic Fender 57 Telecaster, leading the charge for women who would follow in her footsteps for decades after. An early adopter of Pro Tools and multi-effect units, she leveraged technology alongside classic guitars and amps, doing all the guitar work on her albums. In the years since topping Billboard charts, Brooks has set about her work in the industry with grit and determination, becoming a first call writer and producer. She has worked with artists such as Jennifer Love Hewitt, Katy Perry, and the voice finalist Juliet Sims through her production company, Kissing Booth Music. In 2018, Brooks co-wrote BB Rex's award-winning smash, I'm a Mess, which went on to sell over 2 million worldwide. Her songs continue to be featured in hit TV shows such as Orange is the New Black and Little Fires Everywhere. As a multi-award winning artist, mentor and coach, Meredith is exceptional at bringing out the creativity and authentic voice in the new artists of whom she works. For Brooks, it's important to honor all sides of ourselves and she wants to help others find their authentic voice and build a foundation of confidence around their art. Congratulations, Meredith. Thank you. This is how I write my songs, too. I don't use a computer still to this day. I was 11 years old when my sister ran away from home, and when she was leaving, I was chasing her um, down the street, screaming, I'm going to steal your guitar, and I'm going to play better than you. I actually thought that would make her turn around and come back. Um, when, my mom, when my mom saw like how hard I was working at this giant harmony guitar with these big old strings that were like really hard to press, she went out and bought me my very first guitar. It was an Epiphone. I still have that guitar. She was going to give it to me for Christmas, but of course, she put it there way too early. And I got under there and I unwrapped it every day. And then I opened the case and I played it every day, waiting for her to come home. Ah, 15 minutes. Okay, wrapped it back up, put it back as if she didn't know. Of course she knew. When I was reunited with my sister and she saw how well I was playing, she said, don't just play guitar, you need to play lead guitar. I'm like, what's that? And she said, here. And she handed me Eric Clapton, Layla. Okay. She had no female lead guitar player for me to listen to. From that day on, my whole life was about music. And 25 years ago, my career hit a crescendo when I became an overnight success <laughs> at the age of 40. <laughs> I was on the cover of Guitar Player Magazine one of the first three women to ever be on the cover. Can you imagine? I joined the top grossing festival of 1997, 98, 99, Lilith Fair. 
That was the tipping point, I think, for changing the paradigm in women's music forever. But now there's a whole new generation of creative, amazing, amazing young women. I know there's one back of me here and all these beautiful women on stage that are coming through the business right now, and a lot of them are actually in this room. And I think sometimes, you know, what can we, what, what can we continue to do to blaze the trail for them? And it's coming to events like the She Rocks Awards, supporting women's international you know, music network. So what I'm gonna to continue to do and what I, I've really grown to love to do is champion the artists I see that are invested in themselves, serve in their sacred circle, share my experiences and my resources, yeah, brainstorm solutions to challenges. In fact, these are the things that I need still in my career today. I've had a lot of support to get here tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Carmen. Kami. Milk. There she is. She's coming. And, um, I want to thank you for recognizing my accomplishments. Um, to the She Rocks Awards and win, um, and to, this is where I started writing it because I'm like, you know what, I want to say something a little bit more. Um, I want to say thank you to the person who nominated me for this because she's been a real friend to me, Kim Gardner. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bonnie Glanter, Laura Whitmore, I know. It's been, I think we're friends <laughs> still. Um, and my family, my family's here. My son, my niece, my friends that have flown in and they're all sitting at that table. Some of them did my, my makeup even. <laughs> Help me with my clothes, that kind of thing. But this award is actually dedicated to my mom and my sister because without them, I wouldn't be the woman I am today. And I miss them very much. So.